In the last few weeks I had several viewers asking how to use the DCCX CSB1 Express board to build a Loconet command station. And since I wanted to have one myself, I ordered a few boards and built one to find out. In this video I am showing you step by step how you can do it as well. Hello everyone and welcome to the IOTT channel. I am Hans Tanner. Welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I am happy you made it here and thank you for your support of my channel. The basic idea is to use the XCSB1 Express command station board and add a Red Hat board on top of it, which then will take care of the Loconet connectivity and data management. Since the CSB1 board is a fully integrated command station with two onboard power boosters and a power supply, this is much simplified compared to implementing something similar with individual boards as shown in previous videos. Nevertheless, as it turned out, there were a few hurdles to watch out for to make it successful. So, here we go. First, we need an XCSB1 Express board. You can buy one in the DCCX store or you can order them from a board manufacturer like JLC PCB, who also is the sponsor of this video. All CSV1 design files are open source, thank you DCCX, and can be downloaded from the GitHub page listed in the description. The design is done using the KiCad software, which also can be downloaded from the internet. The JLC PCB web page has several papers describing how to create the necessary data files to place the order with JLC PCB. The documentation describes how to install the necessary KiCad plugin and how to create Gerber file, bill of materials and robot placement file. Follow the instructions step by step and you are ready to place your order. On the JLC PCB web page I started with uploading the Gerber file. The PCB is then displayed on the page and you can set the remaining options as desired. I decided to order 5 boards in black color. This is personal preference but I always think that black PCBs with white silk screen looks so much better than the green or blue option. At the bottom of the page I also activated the assembly option. Note that the CSB1 is a 4 layer PCB so the PCB type is automatically set to standard and the economic assembly option unfortunately is not available in this case. Next we upload the bill of materials and the robot placement file and verify the components on the next page. I had to rotate the pin headers and the ESP32 module, which also had to be moved a little bit to fit the soldering pads. No big deal and don't worry, JLC PCB engineers will be reviewing the order before it is entered into production. And if there is anything that does not make sense, they will contact you via email to resolve the problem. I then placed the order and as you can see here, the order total for the 5 boards was around $150, so roughly about 25% of what you pay for the commercial boards. Once the order is placed, you can monitor the progress of the production process on the JLC PCB webpage and you will also get an email once the order shipped. And then, only a few days later, you will receive your boards as always of outstanding quality. The nice thing about the CSV1 board is that the designers used the same basic board layout and pin headers as we are used to from the Arduino boards. This means that existing stackable boards like the Red Hat at least geometrically fit on the CSV1 board. Of course we have to check the schematics to make sure that the electrical connections make sense as well. The Red Hat needs 5V and ground to power the IoTT stick and V in with a minimum voltage of 12V to power Loconet. The CSB1 schematics shows a buck converter for the 5V supply which makes it possible to power the Red Hat and IoTT stick directly from the board 
without using a DCC AUX shield. The VIN pin on the other hand is not connected, so that is a modification we need to do. Next to the DC barrel jack there are four soldering eyes which carry the positive voltage from the jack. The voltage range is 12 to 25 volts which is in line with what the Red Hat can handle. Unfortunately the four soldering eyes are before the reverse voltage protection of the board, so I use a diode to connect the V-in pin to the DC source. There are no components on the bottom side of the CSV1 board, so it is no problem to add the diode. Just choose any diode that can handle about 1 amp or more and that is the only modification needed to the CSV1 board. On the red hat we need to bend out or cut pin 7 on the power connector. The reason is that it is connected on the red hat board to the 5 volt pin, which makes sense as long as you are using an Arduino, Uno or Mega or any other board that carries 5V on that pin, for example the VMOS D1 or 32. On the CSV1 board the pin carries 3.3V, so connecting it to the 5V output is not really a good idea. On the other hand, the pin is not needed, so we can simply cut it away. Another difference between the CSV1 and most other Arduino boards is the voltage on the serial port. Most boards use 5 volts and that is what the Red Hat is configured for. The CSP1 uses 3.3 volts only, which means the Red Hat will not receive the serial communication and we have to configure it for the lower serial voltage. To do so, we simply need to install the header pins labeled 3V3 and then place a jumper on it. This will shorten the upper part of the voltage divider that converts the 5 volt input of a standard Arduino board to the 3 volt 3 interface of the IoT stick. The last modification is a little surprising and it took me a while to figure it out. Despite the 3 volt 3 configuration of the serial port, I could not see any communication taking place between the IoTT stick and the CSP1 board, until I swapped the RX and TX pins. And indeed, once I checked the schematics, it became clear that the CSP1 is using the opposite sequence of RX and TX on the first two IO pins compared to all other Arduino boards of this world. Innovation at its best, one could say, or probably more stuff happens. Luckily, the fix is simple. All we need to do is remove the port selector jumpers and replace them with diagonal connections of the pin headers. I conveniently used wire wrapping, but you can also solder wires across or use jumper cables. On the IoT stick software, there is one minor modification but I think it is more related to the latest DCCX software version than to the command station hardware. I noticed that in some cases sending a command to turn the track power on or off could lead to contradicting on and off commands going back and forth indefinitely between Loconet and the command station. So I eliminated this condition in the stick software and you should download the latest version before you are using the Red Hat with the latest DCCX software. This fix is only needed if you are using the Red Hat. For all other hats, there is no need to update at this time. So, with all that in place, all we need to do is to place the Red Hat on the CSP1 board install the IoT stick and connect the track wire from the track output to the track input of the Red Hat. And of course connect the track and place a drain on the rails. We now can connect the power supply, ideally about 16 volts for HO or 12 volts for N scale, and then connect a Loconet throttle and we are ready to run the trains. In addition, you also can use the smartphone and connect to the Vice Throttle server, either the one on the CSP1 board or the one on the IoT stick. You now have options. If you need more output power than the 2x5 amps provided by the CSP1 Express board, 
you can stack additional booster boards like the IOTT power shield, which gives you 8 amps per channel. I am going to show how to do that in a future video and of course I am also working on a new enclosure frame for the CSB1, so stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss future videos on this topic. And that's it for today. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you are ready now to build your own low-cost Loconet command station so you can use your existing Loconet throttles and input boards along with the DCCX ZSB1 Express board. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. It takes only a few seconds but helps a great deal with promoting this video and the IOTT channel in general to other model railroaders because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.